In this lecture, we will elaborate on refrigerator and heat pumps. These are opposite of heat engines um, in, a, in a sense that these are also cyclical devices like heat engines, but run in reverse. In heat engines, we take heat from hot reservoir, generate some work, and reject some heat to a cold reservoir. But what a refrigerator and heat pump does is it takes heat from a cold reservoir and dumps it dumps some heat to the hot reservoir. So in effect, there is a transfer of heat from low temperature to high temperature. However, a work input is required to operate a refrigerator and a heat pump. So in the previous lecture, we used heat engines to demonstrate a version of second law of thermodynamics, which is the kelvin planck statement. It is impossible for any device that operates on a cycle to receive heat from a single reservoir and produce net work. In this case, all of heat is converted to work. Okay, without any rejection of heat to the cold reservoir. Please note this is a negative statement. I mean, in the sense that we are not proving something, we are just proving that it is impossible. So there's no way to prove a negative statement. The only proof, uh, so to speak, is that there is no experiment that has disproved this negative statement. Okay, so all these negative statements. Um, are proved in, in, in a sense that uh, there, we, there's been no experiment which has contradicted this negative state. Okay, so that's the way to think about these negative statements. So here, uh, uh, this a refrigerator is being um, explained. So what does the refrigerator contain? Okay, so it contains a, a fluid again. Uh, like in the heat engine, it's a fluid that goes around. So typically in this case, let's say you have ammonia as a refrigerant. There are important refrigerant. Uh, uh, ammonia was one of the refrigerant and there have been other successful refrigerant fluids that have been used in a refrigerator. So it's a cyclical process. It operates in a cyclical manner. Let's see what we want to do. Okay, so supposing you put some material, which is at your room temperature, into a freezer section of your refrigerator. refrigerator. So the heat from that uh, material, let's say food item, which is at a room temperature, is supplied to a fluid which evaporates. Okay, when something evaporates, uh, chemical bonds between the molecules are broken. So the heat supplied goes towards breaking those chemical bonds and it ev evaporates the molecule. And then you are, these uh, evaporated molecules are sent into a compressor. Okay? So uh, there is, a, this is the work input device. Okay, So there is work is, put into the system, when you compress the material, this, these gas, evaporated gas molecules, you increase the pressure, not only increase the pressure, because of the work input, the temperature also increases. So the fluid goes into this condenser section. Okay, so this condensing section is what is, for example, a normal refrigerator. This is a set of coils that are outside the refrigerator. Okay, so if you uh, place your hand in this section, you can feel it is very hot. Okay, so um, <clears throat> all right, so uh, so heat is rejected out of uh, the coils. Okay, in the in this condenser section, typically that is area which is hot. Okay, so typically if you place your hand, uh, you you can feel uh, that it is uh, much warm compared to the rest of the refrigerator. Okay, so heat is rejected. Uh, uh, in a way, heat is transferred uh, to the ambient atmosphere, which is outside these uh, condenser coils. 
All right. So typically, why do we call something as a condenser? Okay. So condenser means typically gas molecules are condensed into a liquid. Again, new bonds are formed, uh, which gives rise to rejection of heat. Okay. So this is the opposite here, right? So here you supply heat. The bonds between molecules are broken as it evaporates. Here, the new bonds are formed uh, when gas molecules condense into a liquid, which gives rise to generation of heat that is rejected via the coils of a condenser. So here, because of the rejection of heat, temperature goes down. And then there is this is at a high uh, pressure. And this, as you can see, when this high pressure fluid goes through a certain kind of valve, okay, expansion on uh, there are uh, capillary valves and so on. What happens? There is decrease in pressure and temperature. Okay, so and then the cycle continues. Okay, so this is this refrigerator operates through a vapor compression cycle. There are different uh, engineering principles, different design uh, approaches to. Uh, a refrigerator. In this case, what we have demand elaborated is a vapor compression refrigerator. Okay, so uh, so this is exactly the opposite of heat engine. In what manner? Uh, there is a similarity in the sense that both the heat engine and refrigerator are cyclical devices. But a refrigerator, what it manages to do is take heat from a cold reservoir. Okay, and then reject that heat to a hot reservoir. Okay, so this is, and then there is some work input into this cycle, right? So this, in this way, this is heat engine run in reverse. All right. So how do you think about an efficiency? Okay, so there's a reason we don't use this word efficiency here. We will see why. So a way to think about the performance of a refrigerator is by computing the coefficient of performance. We'll define what that is. Uh, so, so what is that we want to achieve? We want to achieve heat removal from a cold reservoir, right? So that's what we want to be doing, right? We want to remove heat from a cold reservoir. And then for accomplishing this, you supply some work to a refrigerator that operates in a cycle. Okay? So how do you think about this coefficient of performance? You define like an efficiency. Okay? This is what is desired and this is what is input into the uh, device. Right? So the desired output is heat that is removed from the cold reservoir, right? And then what you have put into the system is the work. Okay? That's what is put into the system because it operates along a cycle uh, by first law, we can do this balance, right? The net work in is because of a uh, net heat transfer. Substituting this into this formula, we get this quantity. So if you see this quantity, the coefficient of performance for a refrigerator can be greater than one. That is the reason why we don't use um, efficiency of a, a refrigerator because efficiency typically, uh, we say it's, z it's in between zero to one or zero to 100%. You don't see efficiency greater than 100% or greater than one, right? So to avoid this uh, weird, uh, number efficiently being greater than one or greater than 100%, 100%, we use this, we call this quantity, which is like efficiency, okay? Uh, we call this quantity as coefficient of performance, right? For your performance to be high, in this case, the refrigerator performance to be high, this should be low, right? So in, in a sense, it is like efficiency, but uh, this can be greater than one. There is a related device called heat pump. Okay, so this, if you look at it again, there is a transfer of heat from a cold reservoir to a hot reservoir and work in. Okay, so in what way this is different from refrigerator? 
the functionality of this device is different. In a refrigerator, the functionality is on removing heat from a cold reservoir. But a heat pump is used for keeping a hot reservoir warm. Okay, so you want to supply heat to this place so that this is kept warm. Okay, so where do you use it? Okay, so typically it is used in, uh, let's say, winters in Western countries. So uh, typically, so there is the atmosphere outside the house. Okay, there's a residence here. Uh, atmosphere outside the house is quite cold. It's a four degree setting. Okay, so you take heat from that place and then you use it for keeping the indoor warm. Okay, so the heat that is available is only from outdoor environment. So you use that to keep the indoor um, of inside your house. Okay, so you want to keep it uh, warm. Okay, so in effect, you are still transferring heat from a cold reservoir to a warm reservoir. The warm reservoir being your the uh, room where um, this in devices uh, operation. Okay, so again, there's work input. And this is heat pump is operating in a cycle, effectively uh, moving heat from a cold reservoir to a hot reservoir. Again, you can think about the coefficient of performance for a heat pump. How do you think about this? There is this desired output in the numerator and work input in the denominator. So for the coefficient of performance for heat pump to be large, this needs to be small. Putting this together, uh, we can uh, use the first law because it operates in a cycle. Work, net work can be related to QL and QH. Substituting these, you can also connect the coefficient of performance for a heat pump and heat uh, coefficient of performance for a refrigerator. You can connect them by this formula for a given QL and given QH. If you go back to the formula for coefficient of performance for a refrigerator, you can uh, you can see by simple algebra the coefficient of performance for a heat pump is related to coefficient of performance of a refrigerator in this following manner. So where do we go next? Okay. So we in the previous lectures, couple of lectures, we discussed heat engines and stated the Kelvin state. Kelvin Planck statement of second law. In this lecture, we have looked at refrigerator, refrigerator and heat pump. Connected to refrigerator and heat pump is a statement of second law of thermodynamics, which is called the Clausius statement of uh, second law of thermodynamics. We will elaborate that statement in the le next lecture, and we will also show that the Clausius statement is equivalent to kelvin planck statement. And using both these statements, we will prove why a perpetual motion machine of the second kind is impossible. So that's what we will do in the next lecture. Thank you.